today we're going to be talking about Aang versus Korra's antagonist. And Korra has had some very, very intense antagonists. And we're going to use Aang by the time he was in the comics, so he's still in his teenage years. And we'll also try to put him in some of Korra's situations, therefore it would be a lot more even. Now to start off this video, we have Aang versus Amon. Now Amon is one of the best antagonists we've ever seen in the entire Avatar The Last Airbender universe. While also being the most powerful non-Avatar human, arguably with his father, Yakone. And the reason I say Yakone is because Yakone has the greatest blood-bending feat in the entire verse. While Amon still shows absolute strength, but a lot more skill and precision with his blood-bending. It is actually a really good argument between the two of them, but that doesn't really matter because they're both the top of their verse. While being this all-powerful antagonist that could blood-bend you with his mind, we know that Amon is very skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Understand how to chi block and with blood bending he knows how to take away your bending abilities permanently that is unless the avatar decides to energy bend you but as we see with Aang versus Yakone, Aang proved that the avatar state completely negates blood bending and by the end of Atla and the time of the comics Aang proves that he has mastered the avatar state entering it whenever he wants once entering the avatar state to negate blood bending Amon has absolutely no shot to do anything towards Aang unfortunately for Amon this is a terrible Terrible matchup for him he just got really lucky that he wasn't a later villain for Korra because Korra season 2 and onwards would absolutely demolish him the same way Aang would by entering the Avatar state next would be Aang versus Unavatu but that's probably the most interesting topic of this video so we're going to save this for the end so next would be Aang versus the Red Lotus this is interesting because in a straight-up fight an outright fight with Aang versus the entire Red Lotus Aang would demolish them once he enters the Avatar state just like Korra would. But there were unfortunate circumstances that were added along the way where Korra wasn't able to get a fair fight against them. So we're going to try to put Aang in the same scenario therefore would make it fair. Because in a straight fight he would beat them by himself so that's not really an argument to make. Now Korra allowed herself to be captured and put into chains for the safety of others. And if you don't think Aang would do the same for the safety of the Air Nation, the future of it, then you don't know Aang's character. Aang allowed himself to be captured in the very beginning of Atla to save a water tribe he knew nothing about. He would obviously go to go save the Air Nation. Now Korra tried to fight Zaheer in chains and she lost and then later on we see her father come into the picture and they fought against Zaheer together. Might I also add I think Korra's father Tonrock is very underrated in terms of his water bending strength very underrated. Now Korra and Tonrock were pushing back Zaheer. They were beating him up. And if Aang was in the situation and we gave him his group because obviously they're two very different groups. So Toph and Zuko and Sokka would be fighting against Pali and Aang and Katara would be fighting against Zaheer. Now this isn't a situation where I see Aang and Katara lose but again Korra and Tonrock weren't losing either. When Zaheer sees Pali defeated he unlocks flight. He knocks out Korra and then he flies away. The question is is Zaheer knocking out Aang instantly with airbending like he did against Korra? I don't think so. I think Aang would evade him. So for the sake of the argument, let's say Aang did get knocked out and Zaheer flies away with his body because Katara by herself is stronger than Zaheer. But that's another argument. Now the Red Lotus captured Aang and they chained him up and put him in a cave and then they poisoned him. Poison him with the objective to force him into the Avatar state, therefore he could perish, die, be unalive in the Avatar state, therefore ending the cycle forever. Now Aang entering the Avatar state, we've seen what kind of monster he is. I mean, in his base, while he was asleep, he cracked a mountain. What do you think he's going to do inside of a cave? while he's inside of his avatar state. He's breaking free like Korra did. He's fighting against the Red Lotus temporarily as he chases down Zaheer. The difference is Aang in his avatar state has free form flying, just like Zaheer does, except Aang is moving in an elemental sphere bending for elements. Now, Zaheer and Korra weren't really fighting. Korra was trying to capture him. Zaheer was just stalling, pushing her off until the poison took effect. But the difference is Aang would actually capture him before it did because he's much faster. He has the same form of flying. I just don't see a scenario where he loses to the Red Lotus like whatsoever. Also, once he falls down from being poisoned, we know Toph has the capabilities of removing all poison out of a body. Toph being a part of his team would remove everything outside of Aang. Now, this would be a big focal point for the future, which would be the next topic, Aang versus Kovira. 
Now we see in season 4, Korra was struggling with her PTSD while also having some of the poison stuck inside of her which Toph noticed. And Toph tried to remove the poison out of Korra but Korra kept reacting very badly to it. To where Toph said, you don't really want it outside of you because you're not ready to be the avatar again, you're mentally blocking yourself. Which is understandable because Korra did go through a lot. The difference is, I think Toph will remove the poison out of Aang at the end of season 3 like I stated earlier. But let's say Aang went to the swamp, he still had some poison inside of him would he let Toph remove it out of him now that's up for your interpretation of the character I think Aang would because we've seen him almost die in the avatar state just like Korra did but Aang didn't react the same way she did but obviously different interpretations of Aang's character obviously they're two different humans with different life experiences and different ways to handle things but then Korra has her first fight with Kovira where Korra was losing until she went into the avatar state and then she was slamming and then she went through her PTSD episode one more time. Now, where I was talking about the whole where Aang wouldn't have this in the situation, Aang would just beat Kovira. In fact, Aang would slam Kovira. It would be a massacre. But even if you say yes, PTSD, and then they fight later in the future, where Korra and Kovira fight once again was inside of the mecha robot, you're gonna give Aang the master airbender, master of the techniques and fighting style a close space. We see when Aang is in a close space with any bender, any prodigy, any fighting stance, it is nearly impossible for any opponent to even tag him in this scenario. Kovira would have her liquid metal, and obviously this would be a threat, but I don't even think she She's tagging Aang in this certain scenario. Now, I know people are going to argue, what about the Mecha Robot? How is Aang defeating that? Korra didn't defeat the Mecha Robot on her own. She had a lot of help. And I mean a lot of help. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's like saying Aang versus Azula, but you have to also consider the drill that Aang was trying to destroy. Aang also had massive help from Toph, Sokka, and Katara while destroying this drill and fighting Azula. He didn't do it on his own. Fighting against Kovira, Aang is stronger than her. Korra was stronger than her. Korra just didn't go through her PTSD. I don't really think there's an argument you can make here. Kovira openly stated that Korra is stronger than herself. Kovira is the weakest antagonist out of all Korra's antagonists and Aang's antagonist other than Zhao. But Zhao is Zhao. Other than his badass nickname, he's Dookie Beats. But he does have a badass nickname, the Moonslayer. Yeah. Now we have the last legendary battle, Aang versus Unalak and Vatu. Now to be completely honest, before we get into the whole fight, I don't think the season would ever happen to Aang because Aang reacts to his mentors differently than Korra does, especially in that season. When Aang was afraid to actually lose his mentors, he ran away from home, most likely would have came back. But he adored their mentorship and adored them as people. Korra lashed out to her mentors, to her father, and tried to ignore everything that they told her so she could follow a new mentor. This was Korra's lowest point, which also meant the next season was her highest, and then we see Korra's redemption, she became a very well-written character. But let's get into the battle. Now to start off the fight, we see Korra send Unalak outside the portal and started 1v1-ing Vatu. And entering the Avatar state, she started beating Vatu, put him in the elemental sphere. Now as Unalak is outside the portal, we see Eska and Desna and Unalak fight against Bolin and Mako. Now if this was season 3 or season 4 Mako and Bolin, they would have been able to hold them off, but season 2 Mako and Bolin was significantly weaker and they were defeated rather effortlessly. Now, do we think Katara and Toph would do a better job? Yes, Katara by herself is stronger than Eska and Desna. Eska and Desna were defeated by Mingwa. Mingwa was relative to Kaya for a moment and she doesn't have feats relative to Katara. Base Unalak with no Vatu has no feats relative to Katara either. They're simply not getting through Katara and Toph, but let's just say they do. Aang isn't able to seal away Vatu, although we know he knows how to use the elemental sphere. Unalak hits him from behind and then he fuses with Vatu to where we get Unavatu. Now we got a super amped waterbender, the dark avatar that can only waterbend. Now there's no way to quantify how much more powerful he got, but we saw Aang fight against the strongest firebender of all time, amped by the power of a hundred suns, a super amped firebender. And if you compare the strength of both their feats of both their elements, it looks like they're extremely relative when they are both amped. But sure, let's not use this here because we can't really quantify how much stronger the Dark Avatar became. We don't know their upper limits, we don't know their skill set, we don't know what changed. We're not going to use the eye test for this fight. Now, while Korra was fighting against Unavatu, she was losing until she entered the Avatar state to where she started slamming him. Now, this is my biggest issue I think a lot of people forget. Korra was winning the fight. She was beating Unavatu. It wasn't until Korra tried to restrain him with water arms. Let me say that again. She tried to restrain the dark avatar that could only waterbend, a amped waterbender 
with water arms, making that rookie mistake allowed her to be captured by Unabatsu, allowed her to be placed in a situation where Vatu was able to take Rava out of her mouth. The difference is Aang would be in his elemental sphere. He's not making water arms to connect with Unabatsu. Aang is obviously bending the four elements, but he would be using more air and earth, his preferred elements. Not water, which the water bender could use, not fire what the waterbender can extinguish, but the other two elements he can't do anything about. Instead of immobilizing him with water arms, he would do it with earthbending like we saw him do against Ozai. We also see him do continuously in the comics as well. I think a lot of people underestimate how powerful this elemental sphere is. You're bending all four elements at the exact same time all at once. Your speed is amped freeform flying in fact we've never even seen the elemental sphere penetrated or destroyed when it's on a person before Korra should have won her fight against Unavatu. she made a rookie mistake but she was also very young Aang would simply defeat his opponent before Unavatu became the massive spirit that we all see later on and spirit bending isn't the only way to defeat a spirit I don't know where this misconception comes from Aang has defeated a spirit by putting a hole in it by bending four elements all at once into its chest Vatu took Rava out of Korra his mouth and started hitting her until she dissipated there are multiple ways to defeat a spirit and Aang could do all of this as well. Aang can also energy ban Unalak when he's immobilized by Earth. This is by far the most difficult fight that Aang could have compared to every other core antagonist we see. And by no means do I think it's an easy fight. This is actually the one that would be somewhat difficult, but Aang still wins this as well. Aang is not only the greatest avatar of all time, he also surrounded himself with the greatest benders of all time. Tara, Toph, Zuko, absolute prodigies in all their elements. Make sure you guys subscribe, comment down below, and like the video. Let me know if you guys want me to make another Avatar video, an Adventure Time video. I was thinking about doing a Kong and Godzilla video or maybe a Gohan one. Just leave ideas down below.